So today I wanted to take a look at some of the CPUs I have and how they perform in Starfield, starting with the Ryzen 5 2600, which is what Bethesda recommends as a minimum. Well, they recommend the X version of it, which is a little bit faster, but still, this should be uh, an interesting look. And then we're also going to look at the 3700X and then 5900X. I'm using, uh, I've used, I've recorded footage with these CPUs with the 6800 XT GPU, RTX 4090, and RX 7900 XTX as well. Uh, I'm going to be doing a benchmark run of New Atlantis, which is one of the most CPU demanding areas in the game. Basically going to be running from the starport to the lodge. And then also going to look at that combat area in the tutorial part of the game as well. So the settings that we're going to use is 1440p, all high settings. And what's also interesting about this uh, this benchmark here that I'm doing is that it should also give us a good look at the NVIDIA driver overhead cost to the CPU, which is a thing, obviously. Uh, Hardware Unbox has done videos about this. Also, I, I usually hear it in my own comment section when I make videos is that Whenever the RTX 4090 is CPU bound, people will say, oh, it's because of the driver overhead. I think that's way overblown to be something that costs a lot more than it actually does. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm surprised how, um, how little it actually affects things here. Because, you know, you would, you would notice that most on a slow CPU. Usually when you pair a slow CPU with a fast GPU is when you would notice it the most. Basically, a Radeon GPU would get you more out of your slow CPU than the GeForce GPU would, right? Because of that extra driver overhead cost, right? So here we're looking at the minimum that Bethesda recommends. Um, you know, it's a six year old, six core, 12 thread CPU. And I'm actually surprised, like I said, at, at how little it actually, um, uh, the difference is between the two. Um, so. Besides the point, I'm actually quite surprised with the CPU performance also in this game because, yeah, you notice like this area that we just went through, it's it's a part of the game where the game is loading maybe the next part of the map, I don't know, but it happens on every CPU when you go underneath that hotel. There's like a loading area. So stuff like that you would notice obviously a lot more in a, in a slow CPU like this, right? But I think if you have had this CPU for a long time and you have it paired with maybe like a with an RTX 2070 or something like that, I think you would be okay in this game. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, in these areas you're not going to hit 60 obviously, but that's hard to do even with fast CPUs in this game. Um, obviously, so yeah, I'm actually very surprised with the performance of the, of the 2600. So. And as you can see, the 1% the lows and averages between the two of them are quite close. The scanners on the frontier are reporting a ship coming in hot from orbit. I really thought I'd lost them. Barrett? Now we're going to look at this combat area here with the same exact settings, 1440p, everything high, native resolution between these same GPUs. And this part of the benchmark, obviously it's not gonna be matched exactly the same, just like uh, like the other one was, basically, just because of the variables, you know, it's a fight, so things, things can change, but it should give us an overall look at how uh, these two GPUs perform, well, how this CPU performs, actually because we're entirely CPU bound. But yeah, and as far as the NVIDIA uh, CPU overhead, I don't think it's gonna be that accurate of a measure here just because of the differences in variables, but it should be interesting to look at regardless. So let's look at the rest of this for another minute or two. And then we're gonna look at the 6800 XT versus the 4090 at 1440p.
Here we are with the 6800 XT and the 4090 at 1440p high settings natively. And yeah, this is kind of a funny benchmark because the 6800 XT matches and even beats the 4090 by a couple of frames because of that driver overhead. So technically, it's very similar results to how it was with the 7900 XTX, right? But it's still kind of interesting to see and interesting to, to look at how important your CPU is these days with some of these games. So yeah, we'll just look at uh, the rest of this benchmark and then going to jump onto the combat part again with these same GPUs and see how things work out over there. So here's that same area where we drop in frame times and 1% lows because the game is loading something clearly. And yeah, there are some areas like this throughout the city, obviously, because the game is loading assets, whatever it's doing. So yeah, those, those would be noticeable with a slower CPU like this. But with a faster one, you don't really notice them that much. Although, yeah, they do affect the frame rate just a little bit. Here's this same combat section. So now with the 6800 XT and the 4090, we're gonna take a look and see how things work out over here. It should be fairly similar to how it was with the 7900 XTX. But yeah, let's take a look. Quite interesting to see how the 1600 XT is uh, by a couple of frames ahead of the 4090 because of that CPU bottleneck that we got that we're looking at. So yeah, that that's kind of interesting to see. But I got one more thing. I did record some 4K footage with the 6800 XT with this CPU, just because I was curious to see how it would match against the 4090. It actually does quite well. So it's just going to be that run from spaceport to the lodge. Let's take a look. So this is 4K here with the 6800 XT and 4090. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I recorded this footage just because I had the 2600 in the PC and I figured, you know, why not? Why not see how the 6800 XT compares with the 4090 in this CPU bottleneck scenario? And yeah, I think this is like the threshold for the 6800 XT where it's becomes GPU bound a lot of the times, but also CPU bound a little bit. So yeah, it's it's very interesting to see. And just from my personal experience and my GPUs that I've played, like this game is definitely much better optimized for Radeon. Uh, from what I'm looking at here, it's like they perform a tier higher or Nvidia performs a tier lower, whichever way you want to look at it. So yeah, I mean, it's a named sponsored title. So they obviously had access um, to work with Bethesda. Uh, that's what they said themselves as well. So it will be interesting to see what Nvidia does with driver optimization now that you know they have access to the game. So yeah, it will be interesting. But yeah, if you have a, a Radeon card with this game, um, you're eating pretty good, even though the game is very demanding. So yeah, but yeah, that's my conclusion. I well, hope you guys enjoyed this little benchmark I put together. I don't usually mess around with CPUs like this, but since I have them, I figured why not? Even though it took me all of yesterday to do this because, you know, it's three CPUs and 
three GPUs per CPU, that's 27 benchmark runs. So yeah, it, it took a little while, but uh, I do enjoy it. And I also wanted to test the minimum recommended CPU as well. Uh, I'll be looking at the 3700X next in the same area with the same GPUs and see how that works out. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, leave a like and leave your thoughts below in a comment if you have any thoughts about it or any recommendations. Thanks for watching.